Claire McFave, as we like to call you. <laughs> Welcome to Coffee Chats. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> this is the first episode of a series of interviews that we're conducting um, as a way to stay connected to our Base Coast community because one of the things we've been talking about missing is that feeling after you leave a music festival and one of the things that stands out to you is all those conversations you just had. And some of them are ridiculous and some of them are inspiring. And um, there's this whole array of conversations that happens that in a lot of ways we aren't really, we aren't getting our fill of them as much because we're not gathering as much, but there's other ways that we can connect. and. This is one of them. So thank you for joining me. I'm so um, excited to be here. <laughs> I'm starting each of them with some Base Coast uh, memorabilia just to pull the heartstrings. Here's some of our old tickets for those of you who uh, remember these. This one is uh, from Base Coast 10, 2018. This one, Base Coast 2017. Mm -hmm. What was that? Was that gold? Was the gold theme? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Gold theme. Um, which, after interviewing some people, it seems to be the number one theme that we've had over the years in people's minds is gold. So that was the ticket from gold. And oh, personal favorite, go from Ivy Lab on their picture from the Red Stage Dome. And this was our ticket for 2019. So there you go some Base Coast mm. memorabilia. <laughs> so Julia has been teaching yoga at Base Coast since, I was trying to remember, Squamish days? Did you teach in Squamish? Oh my God. I, well, the very, very, very first one, What? What? that was uh, 2009, was it? 2000, 2010? Six, seven, 2008, I think maybe. And this yeah, is where okay. Andrew and Anna would be able to answer this question in a second. <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, it was right because I came back. I had been teaching in Hong Kong for three years, and I came back to BC, and I met you then. Right. And uh, it, was that, it was that first year where it was, I, it was literally only like 500 people, right? It was super, super small, maybe even smaller. Yeah, I think it was around that many people. And you taught yoga at that one. That's amazing. So yeah. you really have been with us since our first year. Oh, yeah, since, since day one. Well... What a joy to have you as our first coffee chat then. <laughs> um, so oh, I'm the first. This is amazing. You are the first. So, okay, this is an awesome. I feel honored. Oh, well, the feeling is mutual. Um, so one of the things that stood out to me that made me want to uh, ask you some questions is I would say a lot of the people in the Base Coast community have an entrepreneurial spirit whether or not they are living completely off their entrepreneurial endeavors or just having some side income or maybe just beginning their journey, wanting to head in that direction, there's a very large spirit in the community um, that people want to work for themselves. They want to be their own boss. They have their own ideas of how to make the world a better place. And some of those ventures most of them, all of them have been impacted so greatly over the pandemic and COVID. And, but the one thing that really stands out about the entrepreneurial spirit is the will to survive and the creativity at all costs and the ability to pivot and the ability to make changes and adapt to your environment. I mean, that, those are the things that create successful entrepreneurs. Um, and you have definitely stood out to me over that transition because you've pivoted your work, which has been teaching yoga around the planet for many years, um, to an online platform. Um, and so it made me want to interview you because I really think that there might be some things that we can talk about that might help other people who are thinking about moving to an online platform um, and just some key things that maybe they we could point out to help you on that journey and maybe some key things that we could point out that you might want to avoid or just help people along their path. So 
uh, one of the main things that I've heard online is that uh, you're getting people high online, Julia, <laughs> with this breathing technique called Kriya. Is that how you say it? Yeah. So I've been teaching. That's one one uh, way of teaching. Pranayama is the broader term for breath work or breath move in, working with your breath in different ways and kriya um i've been using the word kriya kriya is just another word it's like a broad word as well it's in the language of yoga that just means like a cleansing technique and so i've been teaching a lot of kundalini kriyas as well as other forms of there's different types of breath um breath practices from different schools and kundalini is like one way of doing breath work and that's the one where people do get quite intoxicated <laughs> off their breath. <laughs> so yeah. I've captured some of those moments online. I'm going to play them now. So these oh are some examples of Julia. Oh dear. Now when I say you're getting people high, this is, I mean, it's obviously a joke, but this is the comment that I've heard from people is that one of the things that has got them through the pandemic is joining your classes and this breath work you're doing because it's giving them, it's make, it's elevating their mood. It's, it has an intoxicating effect on their body. Can you speak to that? Yeah, it is, uh, you know, out of all the different practices, I mean, I love asana movement, body movement is, is, is incredible as well. But I was, I want to say about four or five years ago, I was actually at a conference doing a little bit of homework because, um, I was about to teach a level two. I was, in, I was nervous about it. It was kind of like the next level in teacher training. And I wanted to go to New York city and I went to the yoga journal conference just to see what was up. It was just kind of like an investigation because I hadn't really been in mainstream yoga in a while. I was do, off doing my own thing, but I wasn't, hadn't really been steeped in what is everybody doing these days? Like, and so going to another festival is a great way to do homework. And um, I hung out with, in New York with my friends there. And um, in those three days, I felt so phenomenal. And I thought, what is this common thread between every single teacher had been, regardless of what school they were coming from, what style they were, the common denominator in all teachers was they were all teaching at least either half the class or 20 minutes of the class of pure breath work and specifically from the kundalini tradition because i had been teaching pranayama this thus far but then at that point i hadn't really dropped into the kundalini because i was like it's kind of mar um demarcated by people with like you have to wear all white and it's like this kundalini thing and i just and it, it looks silly and it's kind of like crazy some of the shit that goes down you're doing like repetitive movements like you look wacky when you're doing it and right. I thought I'm not gonna do that that looks like for crazy people and I don't want to get into that and then when I actually did it I was like oh my god this I feel amazing my mood is elevated it basically what it's doing is working with your respiratory system right now which is a huge huge focus on people's health well-being um, it's a huge focus in the media because COVID is a respiratory issue. Obviously, it's where it begins, is in our in our lungs. So um, when you look at the respiratory system and when you uh, move it in various directions, so you're moving your breath basically in different ways to different capacities, different speeds. Sometimes you're doing kapalabhati. Sometimes you're doing what's called the strika breath, which is like kind of uh, a controlled hyperventilation, if you will. Um, different breath retentions and it it literally I feel like it um, takes what you would normally do in a yoga asana practice and takes you mentally and energetically to that level that we're all seeking which is this kind of like inexplicable joy and happiness and freedom um, and and I think now more than ever and why it was so and it continues to be we're very popular in terms of the feedback that I get as well, is that we're all just going through so, we're all so in our heads right now because we've had to be, we've been in survival mode on various levels. And so our mind is just like, like it's in survival mode. And so breathing and our breath is really, really, really shallow when we get freaked out or when we're in survival mode. And right. as a result, we under and underestimate and undervalue what 
what can be given to you through a breath, breath practice and specifically in, in the Kundalini um, techniques as well. So there's this, this, I think the, the high is really um, both energetic and can be understood on the, on the biological level as well. When you look into the respiratory system and in the cascade of hormones that are sent in our bloodstream as a result of encouraging more diaphragmatic movement. So there's a lot of science behind it as well. Mm -hmm. And so exactly, I think what almost everybody needs right now to deal. And I think that in terms of even people who are like, no, I'm not doing yoga. I've had so many people literally stop me in the street and like you said, and, and say, oh my God, thank you for teaching this during that time. It was the thing that saved me in the morning or what have you. So um, yeah, I heard it from so many people. So many people have told me about your breath work. So if people do want to try it out, where do they go? Uh, well, through my, either through my website, so it's juliamccabe.com, or if you follow me on Instagram, my Instagram handle is Julia Marie McCabe. Um, and, uh, and right on my Instagram handle, there's a direct link to my digital studio. So it's, it's all on there. So there's a huge studio of pre-recorded classes, as well as once you sign up, I'd then send you a link to join us live because a lot of people like the live kind of like this real life experience. And, uh, and basically the website has all asana, but then I have a whole section on just, I call it breath medicine. So it's, there's probably about around 40 different, um, like recipes of breath work that you can do for different outcomes. So there's, you know, Kundalini Kriya for, for releasing anxiety, for releasing fear. Um, I just did one two days ago called the Kriya for elevation and, uh, yeah, so it's all there on my website or on my, my, um, Instagram. All right. And so what I found interesting about that is that it really plays into something I want to talk about of, of people who are in our community who are trying to take their business online. Um, first of all, I, I think the key to being successful, part of it is being the right person in the right place at the right time. And I think what is speaking to me here is that you have found an opportunity in COVID to align with something that you're passionate about and it's actually helping people and that is part of the success. It's a success that is so honest. It's not a bot success, it's just a, something that's aligning at this moment in time. Um, mm -hmm. would, would that be kind of like a, I, I wanna give people tips of how they can find how to link their passion to a business that is potentially successful. Um, is it a niche in the market that you're kind of finding? Because it, it is, there is a lot of saturation in the online market. If you're taking your business online, you need to figure out a way to make it stand out from the rest. And this breath work to me has been the thing that really made your stand out from the rest. Like that is a key element of being successful with your online business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that there's right away my mind goes to two different things is a you have to have some kind of passion or actually a belief in what it is that you have to offer the passion can even fizzle you know like i've been teaching this for a long time so but but then the 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 knowing that it's going to be you believe in it that that is what i even more so than the passion factor is that i believe in what it is that i'm you know selling it because and, you know, right when COVID hit, I just almost had this like fire in my belly to move right away. Like I almost didn't, I you, didn't let you myself. You did it right go. away. You were the first I person I saw to pivot and you've also been the most successful. So there's something to that. You know, it was, it was weird. And I think part of it is circumstantial, but I was home and, and, um, uh, my family is far away, so I, I don't have the distraction. A lot of people have kids running around, like distraction of family living with them. And, and I'm, for me, it's not the case. And so in a way, I felt like, I don't know, I also had just this calling in my, like there's like this fireball in my belly that was like, you need, like you need to, all the training you've been doing this whole, your whole life, Julia, 
this is not a time to cower underneath a rock and sh like shake, you know, like you gotta like fucking grab the bull by the horns and share with what you know is medicine. <laughs> Am I allowed to swear? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, it's mm. for a rave. <laughs> so, I think that passion, but also seeing that you believe, actually, you actually believe in what it is that you're doing. Cause a lot of people can be passionate about something, but if they kind of don't believe in it or they're like, man, I'm doing this because it's a popular thing that usually falls flat because it's transparent. And so yeah. I think that there's that, but I also think that, um, what was my next point? I knew this was going to happen. It was going to slide. <laughs> well, I've got one for you. Maybe it'll come back. Yeah. Um, okay. Another thing that comes up to me when people, uh, you know, have asked us for our advice on, you know, if, if they're wanting to get into doing their own business, what's, what's our number one piece of advice? And something I think people greatly underestimate is the amount of time that you have to dedicate to it. It's not something, it may seem like it just happens and it's easy. And, you know, me and Andrea call it the real life of a Base Coast girl because what it appears to be, but what our families and friends actually have to put up with <laughs> of as basically being missing a lot of the time because it's a significant amount of time you have to be willing to put in if you're going to be successful at your own especially an online business because it is so oversaturated getting your message out like can you speak to the time dedication that you've put into it or something along those lines oh yeah dude i feel like anybody who's successful in anything I think, God, not to parallel it to Lady Gaga, but I, Lady Gaga did this speech during one of her, like receiving her awards. And she, the first thing that she said, she said, she held up her award and she's like, I just want all of you to know out there that this took a lot of hard work and commitment. And since I was 17 years old and when nobody believed in me and all the times I fell flat on my face and like so much hard work has gone into getting to where I am now. And she basically was saying, you can do that too, but it's not going to come to you overnight. And I think that right now, what I'm observing a lot, especially with Instagram culture is this desire for like instant fame and instant success and without putting the grit and work in. And you know, and it's every single day. And even when I'm flying high as an entrepreneur, and you can t attest to this too, and those of you who are the same and you're watching now, is that even when you're doing really well, I'm still not relaxing. I'm still thinking six months, 12 months out, how can I be better? Um, I'm not going to rest on my laurels and think, oh, just because my online is doing well now. You know, like if I don't keep up with it, if I don't keep innovating and making sure that people are happy and, and making sure that what I'm doing is valuable, it's, it's, I'm always fine tuning. I'm always going back. I'm always seeing what isn't working. I, it's humbling. I'm always putting myself out there. I'm always like watching the numbers of my likes and dislikes go down and people criticizing or complaining. Like it doesn't come free of people not liking you or people not liking what you're, you're doing, you know? And so, um, I think that that's, part of, especially if you're part of the, the, the experience, it's, it's, uh, a lot of hard work, but I think that, um, uh, what I was actually going to say the point too, I'll add in here is that I think what we're all learning since March of 2020, when the C word hit is that, uh, one of the big lessons I think in what I feel like people's bullshit o meter is really, really thin right now. And, and there's no, there's no capacity for bullshit. Like, and I've seen this in communication and relationships, people aren't putting up with bullshit anymore. And so I think that uh, also, but what people are connecting to, and this goes to those of you who want this, like more of a successful, a successful online platform is that what you're offering can't be just about you. It has to be about how can I make their lives better? Whether it's base coast, you know, bringing music and culture and delighting the senses of their, their, their viewers or their, their audience in some capacity, or, you know, um, I think that without that, that, that factor of 
you, you can't just look out for yourself. It can't just be about you. It has to be about the whole is a huge lesson of COVID 2020 of the black lives matter movement of everything that we can't just like be looking out for ourselves anymore. It has to be all inclusive of everybody. And so I think if you have those two factors together, you um, have something you believe in, whatever it is, even as like crocheting in like groups or whatever it might be, if you believe in it and you do it from the heart and you do it from with the global community for bettering our world at hand, then I think that's a really good place to stay, to be, to start. Well, there you go. It's a quick chat. It's a copy chat with Julia McCabe, Julia McBabe, as we like to call her. Um, yeah. Cool. That was if, fun. Yeah. If you want to connect with Julia and try getting high with her online, see if you like to hyperventilate like everybody else seems to. <laughs> the benefits are apparently incredible. Um, the link is up here. It'll also be in the comments and yeah, try it out. And I hope that if you are an entrepreneur and you are thinking about taking your business online, those are some really the fundamentals. Make sure that it's a passion that's coming from your heart and then it, and then it, you are prepared to put the time into it to make it successful. It's, it's not a lottery. It, it's a lifestyle and that third point of when your when your company has a core value and it's and it's at its roots something that's going to benefit humanity the planet yourself your family even if it's just designed to benefit one person it's inherently going to be more successful it has to come there has to be a, a bigger motivation that's driving it because that's what gives you resilience over time because we all make mistakes. We're constantly making mistakes with our business, but when you have that kind of steam engine of core value working behind you, it can help propel you through um, times like this. And so yeah, there you go. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Julia. Always, I'm really inspired always by what you girls put out and the whole team. And uh, I can't wait for the next base ghost whenever that is. Likewise, <laughs> hopefully sooner than later. Yeah. In some way or form, it will happen again. Uh, okay, thanks a lot. Thanks okay. for tuning in.